What's up guys, welcome to Launch. It's our new vlog series that we have going on that covers marketing and advertising. It's gonna be specifically focused on tech, ads, and other current uh, trends and topics that we have. So we wanna kick things off by talking about Snapchat and the broader picture, apps in general. So Snapchat's been going through a bunch of redesigns. We wanna dig into one of the more recent ones. So early in February, the company basically split into two uh, sections, and this was mainly focused on generating more revenue, and it had the media section, um, the business partners on one side, and then all the traditional um, keeping up with your friends and Snapchats, chat, video, all that on the other side. So why did they do this? It's all in their revenue. They want to monetize Snapchat in a more efficient way. How Snapchat makes its money is when you uh, watch ads, obviously, and when you look through their partner's content. What they wanted to do is make that more significant and make it easier to access rather than um, having it at the end of your stories, I believe. I don't even remember um, how it was anymore. So Snapchat's massive teen uh, user base was very, very mad about this and signed a petition. There's over a million people who signed this petition to send to Snapchat asking to revert the changes. There is a fake tweet that claimed Snapchat would revert back to its old design if it got enough uh, retweets. This tweet received 1.3 million retweets, which, ra which ranks it as sixth most of all time. So clearly people were very upset about this and well, Snapchat said, who cares and made another significant update just this week. So Snapchat continues to make updates and design changes that are focused on not what the users want, but what the company wants and make it more efficient for them to monetize and make more money. We're gonna kind of transition um, this whole media stuff and go focus more on streaming. So if you're not already aware, ESPN is owned by Disney and Disney recently made a big acquisition of BAM Tech um, last year. So what they want to do with this is increase digital subscriptions and start um, streaming service. The big uh, news and rumor that's going around is Disney is going to have a Disney um, streaming service like a Netflix. So that means they're probably going to take all their content, um, all Disney's content off of Netflix and Hulu and other streaming services. They already did that with 30 for 30s, which is an ESPN thing. So now ESPN Plus has just been launched and that's where it gets interesting. So ESPN Plus is competitive price-wise. It's $4.99 um, a month and $50 for a year. And it's kicking, Disney's kicking off its streaming future with ESPN Plus and just announced a partnership with Roku. So you can now watch ESPN Plus through Roku, which is very significant. It gives uh, cord cutters an option for using ESPN Plus, which is the main point. Although it's on Roku, it's also available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and phones and tablets. So it was kind of a soft launch in the beginning. They just announced it, and then now it's starting to be available um, and in more places. But the benefit of ESPN Plus is that it doesn't require a cable subscription. It's supposed to augment um, your selection when it comes down to sports, and it also has an element of original content. So ESPN Plus is mainly for people who want to watch um, other sports that might not be in their market or they might not just have a lot of access to. This includes um, MLS, which is, which is American soccer, and also has baseball. Um, it basically brings you out-of-market games and you can watch almost all of them with ESPN Plus. It also includes cricket, rugby, other less popular sports, um, which has a good element for international or people who aren't born in the US, they might have been from like England, for example, and then they still want to keep up with rugby in the United States. Well, now ESPN Plus um, has that for them. So it also um, has original content, like I said. Kobe Bryant's new show, Detailed, which is basically a basketball analysis show. So there's going to be tons of um, original content and out of market games and other sporting events that you can watch. And it's not going to take, a f it's not going to take over ESPN or ESPN2. Um, the content that you see there, those shows are still going to be there, you're not going to lose access to that. It's just supposed to augment what ESPN already offers on mainstream uh, television. So this kind of goes hand in hand with what we're seeing from Netflix. Netflix is making big news and they decided that they want to push more of their original content out and, that, and they gave themselves an $8 billion budget to 
get Netflix to 50% original content, 50% other. Now, this kind of makes sense because of what we just talked about with Disney and ESPN. If Disney and ESPN gets rid of their content from Netflix, then Netflix is gonna be lacking something. So Netflix is trying to make up for it and not rely on ABC, CBS, um, Disney, ESPN, whatever else is out there. They wanna have their own um, content. They wanna be able to be self-sustained. So. so the real question is, do people like Netflix originals? I personally don't mind them, I kind of like them, but there is so many out there. They have a whole um, category section for them, so now are they gonna break it up even further? If 50% of shows on Netflix or Netflix originals, how are they gonna break that up? I mean, how Netflix originally started was just shows and movies that no one really cared about. Netflix starts to get popular when there's more significant content on there. And Netflix probably will never be um, like Hulu in the way that you watch episodes as they come through, so they're fairly new and they're up to date. Netflix is unique in the way that it has content that you wanna watch and you wanna binge watch. That's what makes Netflix super popular is the binge-worthy factor that they have going on. So is Netflix truly gonna be um, a powerhouse in the future? That's up for debate, but Disney's definitely gonna make a run for their money and things are gonna get very interesting um, when you have to consider Amazon Prime Video, Hulu, whatever Disney decides to do, Netflix, and there's a bunch of other ones out there. You can include HBO Go, um, CBS has its own content, Fox has its own content. Um, there's just so much out there that users are gonna start to get uh, very frustrated with options, but cord cutting is gonna be very, very relevant and very, very popular. A huge announcement that was made in the advertising world was WPP's um, CEO, Martin Sorrell, stepped down. So a little bit um, about what WPP is, what do they do? So they're the largest um, holding company of agencies. They own um, one of the most popular ones, Oglavy and Mathers. Um, they're global, they're worldwide. They also own like Aqua um, and other boutique agencies. They have a bunch of um, media partners. So they're huge and they have companies all over, very uh, international and well-recognized brand. So all the revenue that they were driving, um, all the impact that they had is kind of um, shifting now. Uh, media is kind of in a whole different landscape um, amid fake news. So this has a very significant impact. Uh, Martin Sorrell definitely had a huge impact in the ad agency um, world. He kind of came in and took WPP up um, the ranks, really. And in the 20 plus years that he served, he's made um, lots of revenue for the company and really impacted the ad agency world in general. So this kind of comes as a shock to people, but it's also very interesting how we're starting to see um, like scandals and allegations affect CEOs across all different industries and all different kinds of companies and big brands, small brands, it doesn't matter. So. As I mentioned, they are the world's largest advertising and marketing congl conglomerate. Um, they spent $75 billion in advertising, no matter what it was, whether it was digital, um, traditional, newspapers, billboards. Um, they work with Google and Facebook a lot, so they spent a lot, a lot of money and put a lot of time and effort into the industry, and he was at the head of all of it. So it's definitely gonna be interesting to see who takes his spot and how the industry goes, um, or where the industry goes next. So speaking of Oglavy, we have a super cool ad that we want to show you, and it's time for the last segment, the best segment, the Ad Wranglers Ad of the Week. This ad is super unique because it makes you look, it makes you think. It's not a video, which I appreciate, because um, it's more traditional. Usually I'm a big video guy, but today we have a print ad and it comes in three variations. It's made by um, Oglavy in Hong Kong, and it was for KFC to promote their hot and spicy um, chicken. It is one of the most clever and unique ads that I've seen. The first one with the rocket ship is uh, perfect for launch, obviously, but really look at the clouds or the chicken and tell me, what do you think? Are they clouds altered to be chicken or is it chicken altered to be clouds? We're not quite sure. If you really look at it, those clouds, especially on, on like the left, that looks like chicken. That looks like a wing right there. So that's kind of like 
it's kind of interesting. I mean, the graphic designer, shout out to whoever that was, because they put in work. That was, looks awesome. The second one looks like you got some Power Rangers going on or something, and then there's a big explosion of chicken in the background. I got a chicken cloud. Very well executed, very clean, very crisp. Um, and it's KFC, so KFC has very, uh, fun brand. Um, obviously that's why it's crisp, you know, crispy chicken. That's the Ad Wranglers Ad of the Week. Um, let us know your thoughts on Ad and the brand new vlog series that we have going on. Stay tuned for next week's episode and thanks for tuning in.